digital representation of data, text. So we are going to take a look at text today and essentially text is a data type and form of media which displays simple characters and symbols within an information system. Really that's all text is, it's symbols and there's not much more behind it, there's no underlying value as there is with something like number. Text is entered, recognized, stored, and presented by information systems in the following way. So firstly, we'll have a look at, and these are all the information processes, not all of them, but some of them that relate to text going through our system. Collecting, okay, where text can be collected by keyboards and touchscreens. Think about it right now. If you were looking me up and looking up my video, you might have typed in my name into a search engine through your keyboard, or you might have touched it on your touch uh, screen on your mobile device. But also there's more complex methods of also doing text into your system. Okay, these days we have a lot of audio to text recognition. I got my new Apple TV remote the other day. Okay, and now when I want to look up something on my Apple TV, I just hold down the actual microphone button and I can speak into it. And what I say, I see the text appear on screen. Okay, so that's voice to text. Okay, which obviously makes use of microphones. And then we also have optical character recognition in our scanning devices. Okay, that's when I scan a document, but it actually recognizes the text within the actual document. And then when it comes into the system, I can edit that text. But obviously there's a variety of other ways as well that text can be collected and put into a system. The real meat of this though that I want to talk about is the processing and storing of text. Okay, and here each individual text-based character that is entered into a system consumes eight bits of data. Okay, and this eight bits of data means eight zeros and ones. They make up uh, the ca a character, and essentially that is a byte of data. When we have eight of these together, we're referring to a byte of data. Now, not all of them are exactly a byte. Some of them are actually seven bits of data, but because of the standard we use to convert them, okay, it uh, dedicates a byte of data to that. Okay, so basically the binary value that makes that up, okay, is obviously what the computer understands. But what actually tells the computer that that binary value means a specific symbol, a specific letter, number, or character? Okay, and there's actually two of these standards we refer to. One of them is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which is ASCII, and the other is Unicode. So if we do take a look at the letter A, okay, A refers to the actual value of 65 in both ASCII and Unicode. Okay, so that binary value is written there as 01000001. That equals 65. So when that value comes up in the system, Based on ASCII and Unicode, okay, the computer reads it as the character A, and it presents A on screen. Okay, then uh, based on this too, because these are all se sequential, if I was to type in the next value, which is 66, that equals the capital B. Okay, so these two standards, ASCII and Unicode, pretty much tell the computer what specific binary values equal as a symbol, okay, when representing them as text. The current standard right now for storing characters is Unicode and specifically UCS2, okay, which uses 16 bits and can consume up to four bytes of data, okay, depending on which character we're talking about, okay, and it covers all writing systems throughout the world in its single set, okay, and we'll go a bit more into that just a bit later on in this video. Finally, then, is the display of text, okay, and it's presented as these text-based characters which appear on our monitor, okay, that's where we see the end result, that the symbols appearing on our screen. Okay, so what classifies as text? Okay, so what are our different types? Well, firstly, we have letters. Okay, and obviously the letters we know are the ones in our alphabet, uppercase and lowercase, but also other languages' letters as well is classified as text too. Okay, and that might be obvious to you. Now, all of these characters are covered in Unicode, as you mentioned, all writing systems throughout the world, but, okay, other languages are not included in ASCII, and that comes to the fact that it is an American standard, and they predominantly focus on English. So other languages' characters would not appear in ASCII, but they do appear in Unicode. The next category of text is numbers, but the thing to point out about numbers here is that they have no mathematical value. Okay, so we have our numbers here, but they are just symbols, okay? They are recognized as symbols just as letters and other characters are, okay? So there is no value behind them. It's essentially a different data type that is used to represent their values, which we'll go to in a later video. And I bet you can guess what the name is, okay? It's pretty easy to recognize that. And then finally, we have our other symbols as well, okay? And these are all covered in ASCII as well, the symbols that I'm presenting here, okay? But once again, some of these symbols can be mapped to functions when recognized as different programming values, okay? But when they're in text, 
that's all we're seeing here. Them just as symbols. There's nothing else underlying here, okay? So all the characters on screen here are symbols classified as text and nothing more. They're just those symbols, okay? So just make that clear with text, okay? And it'll become more clear as we cover other types of data representation. Now, I just want to go into a little more detail, the examples of ASCII and Unicode here as well, okay? Just so you have a bit of an understanding of how these translations work and the logic behind it too. So as mentioned, text is stored as 8-bit binary values, which then recognizes specific symbols based on the American Standard for Information Interchange or Unicode. 8-bit extended ASCII represents up to 256 symbols, 2 to the power of 7, which essentially is... A whole byte of data okay because that gives us our full 256 values to the power of seven okay but originally ascii was seven bit okay it only covered 128 values and that's why a lot of the letters we saw or with a as we saw before was only seven bit in length because that was a part of that 128 character set okay but they extended upon that to include more symbols okay but unicode is obviously a lot larger and as you can see there it's got over a million symbols available covering all writing systems in the world but let's have a look at a few simple ascii unicode representation symbols for specific binary values and we'll try to break it up what we're understanding and who understands what so we're going to look at the characters, the binary value, and the decimal value. And we've covered a bit of binary and decimal already in previous videos. But I want to just elaborate. The character is what we see on screen. It's what we want to see on screen. Hence why we've pressed that character on our keyboard. But the binary value is what the computer sees, okay? What the computer interprets in order to present that on screen. And then the decimal value is the binary value, but how us humans say that value, okay? So what it's equivalent to, which is easier for us to say. So firstly, let's take a look at capital A. We've already mentioned that in the example in the previous uh, screen, okay? That has a value of 65. The computer reads it as 01000001, but we say 65. Now, the first thing I want to point out and make clear is uppercase A is 65, but lowercase A is 97. So we need to understand that through ASCII and Unicode, upper and lowercase characters are recognized as different separate symbols, okay? It doesn't know that they're connected, they are completely different symbols, even though they are both A to us. One is an uppercase, one is a lowercase. So we need to be specific there that they're from different character sets. Okay, in saying that now, we'll go on with some lowercase letters. So let's take a look at B, which is 98, and then C, which is 99. So as you can see by this pattern, letter values are sequential based on their alphabetical order. Lowercase d would be 100, e would be 101. Okay, that is the pattern that it goes in. And we'll further elaborate upon that by showing capital Z. Okay, Z's binary value is 25 place after A's value. Okay, so capital B would be 66 in decimal. Okay, and Y would be 89 in decimal. Okay, so as you can see, there's patterns that they are all still sequential, the alphabetical letters, except uppercase and lowercase are separate. We'll have a look at some symbols here that are also available. So the at symbol is 64. Okay, the percentage symbol is 37, but the one that you might not recognize that does have a value as well is space. Even when you press space, that consumes memory, and there is an obviously a binary value registered for that as well, which is 32. So I hope this video has helped you understand the digital representation of text. Essentially, that it's made up of binary data as everything is in our system, but we use these two standards of ASCII and Unicode, and Unicode is the actual standard these days, to translate those binary values into a specific character, okay, that the computer understands and which it presents on screen, okay? It actually tells the computer, this is what this value means, this is what you present on screen, okay? And that's written into the software we use that makes that translation, but it's um, ASCII and Unicode, okay, the standards that make it universal for all software systems to recognize those values as what the certain uh, binary value is and what character to present, okay? So that it's consistent across all information systems. So I hope you understand what I've been saying about here in text today.